point lights. I think those can stay. All right. It's been a while since I've opened up these assets, so uh, I do apologize for some of the delays here in explaining what's going on. All right, so now that those lights are gone, uh, this actually starts to make a little bit more sense when we take a look at it. So just in under 11 seconds, I'm able to get an image like that. All right, and that's with four steps of anti-aliasing, a 960 by 540 resolution camera. Uh, we're just doing ray shadows. There's no reflections or refraction or transparency that's actually on this ship uh, in its surfaces, so it's not really necessary to turn it on. Um, but what we will do here is we will set our camera to be a little bit closer. I'm just going to minimize that for a moment. And we're going to move in. And we'll demonstrate what this light is actually doing. It's not that key template, it's this rad faker light that I have, which is way down here. So there it is. Okay, so I have it selected there. But what I'm going to do is going to hit the properties tab for it and change it back to reasonable level. Um, it's important to note when we're lighting these space shots for the show. Uh, or the, you know, most other shows, so that if you're out in space, there is still light coming from other places, or at least we'd like to think there is. If you've seen um, uh, images from uh, NASA where they're working on the space shuttle during a spacewalk and part of the ship is in shadow, it's pretty dark. Um, that's really, really how it would behave, but, you know, on television, we like to play with reality a little bit, of course, and that's just kind of the way it is. But it adds a really, really nice effect if we just have the illumination coming from, say, stars or bounce coming off of nearby planets or uh, light coming from nebulas or something like that kind of coming back at the ship and contributing to the lighting. And that would be uh, the effect that we're going to see here in just a moment. This is going to take slightly longer to render, but even still, look at how fast this is going to go. Now I have the running lights of the ship still on in the shot, so that's being evaluated as well. But when this completes, you'll see that that big dome light is lighting the ship at 15% of its total illumination, but it's filling in some of those small dark gaps and holes on the surface of the ship, and it's getting into there, and it gives you a nice uh, occlusion effect. And when combined with the key lighting effect, and the running lights and other types of interactive lighting, it produces a really, really sweet image. So this is pretty good. This is um, uh, a good test of the render. Like in less than a minute here, I'm able to produce more or less what is a production frame. Now I don't have motion blur turned on here. Normally I would, and I'd be setting it to uh, between eight and 10 steps of motion blur. But uh, even still, uh, this is a fantastic speed test because I'm able to get an image like this out of it and let's check out the anti-aliasing the alpha. Uh, again, I would probably be rendering this at 1920 by 1080, not 1920 uh, by 1080 divided by 2, which is the uh, 960 by 540 image uh, in a final production render. But this is a really, really good speed test because uh, these images on the shuttles that we have before and some of the workstations before would have taken several minutes. Uh, again, those were uh, just a dual processor or dual core uh, uh, base systems. The AMD systems that we had before with the shuttles were um, the AMD uh, Athlon 64, 2.4 gigahertz, 2.2 gigahertz, some of them, um, and of course those were only dual core, but they were rendering at the time as fast as two uh, as a dual CPU uh, Intel Xeon running at 3.2 gigahertz. So that's you know kind of the numbers that we had to deal with back then, and that's why we started going with the shuttles because they were more cost effective uh, for a price point. They were more stable in the studio because we had some power problems on the lot at the Vancouver Film Studios where Battlestar Galactica was shot, and they were obviously cooler to run. Um, not only that, but because of the price point, we were able to get more of them and get more bang for the buck than the older workstations that were the Intel Xeons. Today, with the 920 uh, Phenom uh, running with quad core at 2.8 gigahertz, I'm getting some fantastic render performances here. All right, so with that one light on there, we just start to see like the outer hull being lit up there. Uh, all the interactive lighting or the running lights on the ship look fantastic. Uh, I'm really, really happy with that. 
and I think we need to get that key light turned back on and we'll see what the scene looks like with the key light turned on and all the other lights contributing to the shot. We're just going to pull a uh, little menu over here. We're going to just re-enable that light and we're going to go and select it again really quickly and over on my light properties here I've got it running at 145 percent. Now um, that's hotter than what most people would think you would want to light something with but actually that helps uh, if you're looking to achieve some uh, reality for uh, how lighting is going to work there's going to be lights that are more than 100 percent. After all what is 100 percent? Does it translate into lumens? No it doesn't. So when you're lighting a shot sometimes you have to play with numbers that really don't make sense but you know it's all about whether or not it looks good on screen. So let's set this to 165 percent okay and we should get uh, representation of that in OpenGL. Let's set uh, uh, this to 200 percent all right, and we start to see that right away. Yeah, we keep on cranking that up. Let's go 300%. <coughs> Pardon me. And we can see that it's really, really, really hot there. Let's uh, take a look at that render. Uh, this could be scary. Most of the time, I don't push my lights over 150 to 200%, especially for key light. But this could be quite interesting. And here it is, it's chewing right away, going through this render really, really quick. That's impressive. So the last render time was just under a minute at 58.7 seconds. And in this one, we're at 31.5 seconds, 33. We'll be done in about 10 seconds, it says. Lightwaves render estimations are pretty accurate. Um, sometimes it'll go wildly out of whack under certain circumstances, but I use this as a pretty good guide to determine how long my frames are going to take over top of the network, and I can budget my times accurately, and I can tell my producer or supervisor or one of the other artists in the pipeline, uh, you're going to get your frames probably in about an hour, two hours, three hours, whatever it might be, depending on how complex the shot is, how many uh, images need to be rendered, and of course, how many frames. So I'm going to drag over the window here, and there you go. Um, in just over a minute, we've got a uh, very, very, very hot light in there. That's obviously too hot, but all that interactive lighting, all that uh, running lighting uh, is playing with the key light and the radiosity faker. Um, and I use this radiosity faker light as a faster solution for rendering than just radiosity. And it also performs uh, exactly the way I want it to all the time. Uh, a lot of different render engines, including Lightwaves, have some issues with moving objects around with radiosity, um, and you get ghosting, and it's not really practical under all circumstances. But with these uh, new lights, which are available for free for Lightwave, uh, we're able to use a light that uh, behaves very much like radiosity, but doesn't have any of the drawbacks. Okay, I'm going to set this light back to down to something reasonable here, like uh, 145, where I had it. And I'm going to just... Uh, change where we were. I'm going to minimize this. All right. And again, look at how fast the OpenGL performance is. This is great. Fantastic performance. And let's keep in mind, this, this ship has over 3.9 million polys in it. All right, let's take a look at how fast this renders from this distance. Wow, look at that.